Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the seamless EVPN, VXLAN stitching, EVPN and VXLAN parameters learning byte. All right, here is our topology and there's a few devices I want to talk about. There is Spine One and Leaf One and Host One. Those devices are a part of Data Center One or DC One that you see here. Spine 1 and Leaf 1 are QFX devices. And then Spine 2 and Leaf 3 and Host 2 are a part of DC2 or Data Center 2. And Spine 2 and Leaf 3 are QFX devices. And the whole point of this learning byte is to configure seamless EVPN VXLAN stitching so that Host 1 and Host 2 can communicate with each other. And notice that Host 1 and Host 2 both use VLAN 10 and VNI 5010. And you can see here the IP addressing. Host 1 is 10.1.1.1 and Host 2 is 10.1.1.2. And then we will be configuring some interconnect parameters, some interconnect VXLAN tunnel parameters that is, on Spine 1 and Spine 2. Spine 1 and Spine 2 are going to act as the interconnect gateways for their specific data centers. And here on the left, you can see the loopback addresses of Spine 1, 2, and Leaf 1 and Leaf 3. And then you can also see the interconnect VXLAN tunnel parameters. We have Spine 1, which again acts as a interconnect gateway, uses the ESI value. So this is the interconnect ESI value that you see here. And then you have Spine 2, it uses the interconnect ESI value that you see here. And then Spine 1 is going to use the route distinguisher interconnect value here. And also Spine 2 is going to use the interconnect route distinguisher value here. And then we're going to use the interconnect route target value of target 1 colon 1, 1, 2, 3, or that is target colon 1 colon 1, 2, 3. And the interconnected VNI list is going to be 5010 since that is the VNI that the hosts are a part of, we want to put that in the list. And we'll talk about that when we get to it. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this going. All right, so here is Leaf 1. We need to jump into configuration mode and let's go ahead and configure the default switch parameters. So go to switch options and set the VTEP source interface to the loopback interface. Then we need to set the route distinguisher to a value. This is 168.100.11. It's based off of the loopback address, colon 1. Now, this is going to be different from the route distinguisher that we have uh, for the interconnect route distinguisher. And same thing with the VRF target that we need to set here. We're setting a VRF target of target, colon 65001, colon 1. That, again, is going to be different than the interconnect VRF target. And then we need to move to the protocols EVPN hierarchy and configure the VXLAN encapsulation. And we're setting the extended VNI list to all. Next, we need to go to the VLANs hierarchy. You can see here that we have VLAN 10 configured and we have the default VLAN as well. And what we need to do here is we need to configure the VNI. The VNI has not been configured, and recall that is the VNI of 5010. So we set V10, it's going to use VXLAN VNI 5010. And that is all the configuration that we're doing for Leaf 1. And then we'll jump to Leaf 3 and repeat that configuration that we just did on Leaf 1. So here is Leaf 3. So let's jump into configuration mode, go to the switch options. Set the VTEP source interface to the loopback interface. Set the route distinguisher to something unique based off the loopback address of Leaf 3. Then we set the VRF target that will match what is done on Leaf 1. Then we need to go to protocols EVPN. Set the encapsulation to VXLAN and the extended VNI list to all. Now we could make that more specific, but for what we're doing here, it works perfectly fine. And then we need to go to VLANs, just like we did on Leaf 1. And we need to set VLAN V10 to use the VXLAN VNI of 5010. We'll commit that configuration. 
and then we'll jump to spine one and do the configuration there. Now this is spine one, which is an interconnect gateway. So there's gonna be a lot more configuration involved here, but some similar configuration as well. So we jump into configuration mode, go to switch options, set the VTEP source interface. We're gonna use the loopback interface as the source, set a route distinguisher based off of the loopback address. VRF target, target, colon. And this is going to match what we have on leaf one and leaf three. And then we go to protocols eVPN. And we do need to set the encapsulation to VXLAN and the extended VNI list to all. And then we need to set the interconnect parameters. And so we can go under protocols eVPN interconnect. And we set the interconnect VRF target. And recall that is going to be target colon one, colon one, two, three. And that's only gonna be for the interconnect connection between spine one and spine two. That'll connect those two data centers together. And then we need to set the route distinguisher for the interconnect. And that's going to be 192.168.100.1 based off the loopback and 111. And recall that is different than the route distinguisher that we set under the switch options. That should be different. And then we need to set the interconnected VNI list. It's going to be 5010. And that is very deterministic, meaning if you don't put something in the interconnected VNI list, it will not allow hosts or traffic that uses that VNI to pass through the interconnect. So we want to make sure that we add in the correct VNI and recall that we're using VNI 5010. And then what we need to set next is we need to set the, uh, the ESI for the interconnect. And for spine one, that is 00, zero colon 11, one, colon 12, colon 13, colon 14, colon 15, colon 16, colon 17, colon 18, colon 11. And the reason why I set up that way, so it's easy to remember and to type. And so that will be specific to spine one. When we configure spine two, we'll use a different interconnect ESI. And then we have to set the mode. We have to set the ESI mode and we set that to active or all active that is. And then we need to configure the, or rather a policy that will only accept routes that are marked with the interconnect community or the interconnect target community. And so what we do here is let's jump to policy options. We need to define the community. We're gonna call this IDCI-COM. So interconnect DCI community is what that stands for. Members. And then we set the target or the route target that we configured earlier. So that is target one colon one, two, three, or target one, target colon one colon one, two, three. There we go. And so we've configured that community. So let's configure a policy statement. We're gonna call this, let's say my dash IDCI. And then we're gonna say set term one from family evpn and community and then our idci-com community and then we're going to accept any routes with that community then we're going to set another term to reject all other routes so you can see there that we're going to be accepting routes that are family evpn and have the idci-com community and then rejecting everything else and the reason behind that we don't want to be accepting routes that don't have that community because what could happen in that scenario is we could have a leaf that forms a VXLAN tunnel with a spine in a different DC. For example, leaf one might end up attempting to form a VXLAN tunnel with spine two, or leaf three might attempt to form a VXLAN tunnel with spine one. And we don't want to do that. So we want to make sure that we configure this properly so only routes are accepted that have the correct community. Okay, so then we need to set the policy in the as an import policy in the uh, DCI overlay uh, BGP group. And so BGP, protocols BGP group, DCI-overlay import, we're setting that. And so we can look at that BGP group, and we can see here that this is the overlay group. It's using family EVP and signaling. 
and it has that import policy set to my dash IDCI. So it's only accepting routes that have that interconnect route target. So next we need to configure the VXLAN parameters under the VLAN. And it's gonna be VLAN V10. You can see here, all it's configured is just the VLAN ID. So we do have to set the VXLAN VNI 5010 since that is the VNI we are using. And then we also have to set the translation VNI. And we're just gonna translate that to 5010. So it's going from 5010 to 5010. That might seem a little strange. Why do we need to have a translation VLAN if we're not translating anything? Well, this is very helpful if you have a data center, a business that owns a data center and it acquires another data center. We wanna set up seamless EVPN VXLAN stitching, but maybe we have some overlapping VNIs. And so we can use the translation VNI to get around that problem. Now, since we don't have that problem, the translation VNI is still required that configuration. So the solution here is just to translate it to the exact same VNI. In this case, we're going from 510 to, or excuse me, 5010 to 5010. And then we can just commit that configuration and we'll jump to spine two and configure the parameters there. So here is spine two. Let's jump into configuration mode and go to the switch options and set the VTEP source interface to the loopback interface, set the route distinguisher to the route distinguisher here, which is based off of the loopback address, set BRF target, target colon 65001 colon one, and then we'll jump to protocols EVPN, set the encapsulation to VXLAN and the extended VNI list to all, and then we'll go under the interconnect configuration hierarchy, and then we'll configure the, the VRF target. This is the interconnect VRF target. Recall it needs to match what we configured on spine one. So we'll configure the target colon one colon one, two, three VRF target, which does match. And then we need to configure a route distinguisher. This is gonna be unique as route distinguisher should be. It's based off the loopback address. And then we need to configure the interconnect ESI value. And here it's gonna be 00 colon 21 colon 22 colon 23 colon 24 colon 25 colon 26 colon 27 colon 28 colon 22. And again, I did it that way just so it was easier for me to type out. And then we need to set the ESI to all active. And then we need to set the, uh, the what is it? The interconnected VNI list to 5010. And that is the interconnect configuration. And again, just like with spine one, we need to configure the IDCI community. And so we're only accepting routes that are tagged with that interconnect route target. And so let's go to policy options. We'll set community IDCI-com members target colon one colon one two three. And then we need to configure a policy that uses that community. And we'll say term one from family EVPN community IDCI dash, whoops, need to put a space there, IDCI dash com. Then we'll set term one, then accept, set term two, then reject. And you can see there, we're going to be accepting routes that are EVPN routes and have the community, the IDCI-COM community, which is our interconnect route target. So keep that in mind. And then we need to put that under the BGP group, the overlay D BGP group as an import policy. And then we need to configure the VLANs. That'd be VLAN 10, V10. And just like with spine one, there's just the VLAN ID configured. So we need to set the VXLAN VNI value to 5010 and then the translation VNI to 5010. And let's go ahead and commit the configuration. And we should be done with our configuring. Let's go ahead and jump to host one and host two real quick to see if we can uh, communicate. So let's start the ping here from host one to host two. And then let's jump to host two and start the ping there too. So ping.10.1.101. So 
host two pinging host one. And there we go. Took a little bit. The routes have to start passing. Uh, once the traffic starts flowing, that is, the, the EVP and routes start passing. And so we can see that we have communication and uh, the seamless EVP and VXLAN stitching setup is working as expected. Now, there's a bunch of other verification commands that we can run, but I am going to create another learning byte that goes over all those verification commands because there's quite a bit to go through, and that would be too much for just one learning byte to have the configuration and the verification. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure the VXLAN and EVPN parameters for seamless EVPN VXLAN stitching. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.